You ever not want to review something because you feel like it's too special and it doesn't deserve to be reviewed? That's this. Hi, Zeus Pantera, host of Z Reviews, In Your Fetish, Z Cooks, the Z Unboxing channel, and the Z Second channel. And these are the Broadman FS. And I bought them. Blink, blink, blink. I bought these with money. Like, and they don't make them anymore, so I can't link them for you to buy them. So I bought them out of love. You know when you remember something, like you, you saw a car drive by when you were like 12 years old and you're obsessed with it for the rest of your life? Like the Doug DeMiro story about his Carrera GT. This is my Carrera GT, sort of. When I started doing audio reviews, it was like 2013. We're coming up on the 10 year anniversary. And I um, I went to the New York audio show of my friend from Connecticut, just because let's go to this. It's like $8 or $20, whatever it was. We went there, went down the city and these were in a room and they were the best thing at the show. Like we went to heard all sorts of other shit and it was like, ah, that shit. And that's $12,000 and shit. But these Broadmans, these things were special. And then we never thought of them again until the next year went to Rocky Mountain and we heard them again. The exact same model, different finish. This is the um, piano black finish. And I'll explain in a second why the piano black on this is very important because usually that's not my deal. Usually I'm not a piano black guy. But Broadman makes pianos in Austria where they make these speakers in Austria. So, um, I'll cut this story down uh, like uh, four hours. Heard them, loved them, heard them again, loved them. They were like show special $5,000 because they retailed for like $5,900. And then never saw Broadman again. Did Rocky Mountain two more times. Uh, New York once because it kind of got shit. Uh, never been to Axpona, but uh, maybe they were there. Um, and I never, I just, they kind of went to the back of my mind as like, my friend would always bring them up. My friend only went to a couple of shows. So anytime he and I saw something, it was always special. He's like, man, you remember those Broadmans? And then I was at Capital Audio Fest 2022. And on one of the papers on the wall was Broadman. And I ran into the room like a kid on Christmas. Only the problem was there was no Christmas tree in that room. Because there were no Broadman speakers. Uh, instead, what was there was a man who sells Broadman. It was a, it was a retailer. Um, I could actually link, I'll link his store in the description and you can see what else he's got there. But he's, yeah, I carry Broadman and I just started talking to him and I started talking to him about the brand and I started talking about these speakers. I didn't remember the model number. I just knew they were Broadman. And he was like, yeah, yeah, those, we have two sets of those. We're selling them. One was in our showroom that we used to play all the time. And one we used to take out to her pictures and then put away and we never played them. That's this set. This is a virgin vintage set. Well, it was virgin. I just put about 130 hours of burning on it. Just in my bedroom. Just room. We're in the, the Z sex dungeon here. Um, there are the Ohm Walshes. For anyone who's been wondering where the Ohm Walshes and those appearing super tweeters, they live here on a Lox GA30. And so I unbox these. I, I $2,000. He's like, two grand and $350 shipping because you should have seen how they ship them. In fact, you can see how they ship them. Click the link in the description to go to the unboxing channel. I don't know if that video will be up online when this comes out, but they like wrapped it like the plastic that it had to like peel off. It was ridiculous. Anyway, um, so yeah, I spent some money on a set of speakers that I absolutely don't need. But these were the first speakers that made me think that spending money on speakers might actually be something. There might actually be a reason to spend like money on things. Um, God. So here's the thing. I like weird speakers, apparently. Weird. It's got to be weird in some way. Because just like the ohms are in semi-omnidirectional and then I strap a thing onto the top of it. That's just a tweeter. I think you all can see that that's just, that is just a soft dumb tweeter up in front with no grill. Like that's it. Piano finish. Box. Like the box is just, oh, I gotta get my, I gotta get the rag. I gotta get the cleaning thing. Because like of all the things that I've owned, this is the one thing that I wanna get out of baby diaper and rub it clean. Cause it's just fucking spectacular looking. They're both, 
Yeah, I'll open this window. Have some light on it. Oh, that is legitimately the most. That is the most right there. So how do they work? Come on, Zios, get to the fucking point. This is a two-way speaker, a front-firing tweeter, and a side-firing five and a quarter. If I take this panel off, gently, gently, come on, you got this. Oh, there we go. Oh, there. Front-firing tweeter, very nice, brass ring behind it. Side-firing five and a quarter looks like it came out of a like, Parts Express catalog. And the box is not very big. Like, it's pretty small, actually. And once you take into account the depth of this and how thick the wood has to be, there's almost no room inside of this. However, they are ported, even though you won't find the port, no matter how hard you look. Um, I'm going to have to touch these with my bare hands. Oh, wait, never mind. I have human hands. So I don't have to touch anything with bare hands. I'm stupid. Um... Let me show you where the port is on this. And then you're gonna understand, okay, these are Austrian and these are high end. Because the stand, the off center stand is part of the package. This is not something I added to it. Can I do this without touching it really hard? Let me see. Oh God, there's dust and probably a handprint on this. So there's the port. Do you see it? You don't see it? This ridge around here, this panel that's screwed on in four spots, that's covering the port that is flared and comes out. And then this hole in the stand is where the ported air flies down. And then the stand itself, which is rather heavy, has these beautiful brass adjustable feet on it, which are very heavy. Did I say they were heavy? They're very heavy. Not as piano black. These are more like a matte finish. But yeah, this sits on top of here, on top of these set screws that just sits there. And then the side goes down and then attaches and that sort of holds it all together in a single spot. And they work beautifully now that I've given the break in. In fact, if we go to the unboxing that I was talking about, let me see if I can pick this up again without touching it. If we go to the unboxing I was talking about, you could hear my first initial reaction of an unbroken in speaker slightly set up wrong. And I'm like, oh fuck, I just wasted $2,000. I literally said that out loud. Because I had them closer to the wall and angled because it's a side firing speaker. So I'm like, all right, it'll hit the wall and bounce forward. It doesn't work. It took a little while. I took probably 20 hours of using them before they actually started having any low end response at all. And like, there's so little space in here. Obviously, I've got the uh, Martin Logan Dynamo 400 helping out. But if I shut that off, I still get the magic that it is these speakers. Because we're going to talk about the magic now. So I'll put this side back on, which I believe does help diffuse the sound and steer it. Because this is not like, a, it could just be matte, like a material. This is a lot, this is wood. This thing weighs a lot. And it is vented here specifically with these like chamfered, I think chamfered is the right word. So let's put this back together. When these fire sound, they obviously fire the tweeter forward because it's in front and that's where it goes. So this just sort of like, that goes down, then it's sort of like, I don't want to touch it with my hand again. Boom. So there, now it can't fall this way. It could kind of still like, you would have to have a lot of twisting action to get this to fall off the stand now. But that bec that becomes part of it. So yeah, when this when you're listening to it, you're thinking the same thing I'm thinking because I'm looking at it and going, how do you how would you do that? That's how you're gonna work. You would hear just tweeter, and then there would be some sort of muddled bullshit for vocals because it's like you're only a two way, you have no volume to make low end. Yeah, we're not gonna be a good speaker. This is the stupidest fucking design I've ever seen. I fucking love the way these sound. Let's let's see if I can get the uh, Shanling app to work. I'm using real quick on the because we're losing the light. And when I lose the light, hold on, let me check the camera. Yeah, when I lose the light outside, it completely fucks the camera's color up. We're gonna finish this review in the basement. I haven't moved them out of the room. I set them up, I broke them in, and then I started moving them perfectly straight. I actually was able to align them from the reflection of that one of this one, and then the reflection of this one of that one. I was able to actually, see that one's crooked now, because I could literally see in front, because I took the stand and moved it. So now I gotta fucking rotate the whole thing. It's like, there we go. So moving them closer or further away, you, here's what they need. They need a sidewall. That speaker only works because it hits a wall and diffuses out. Also the downfiring port diffuses out. And somehow through all that bullshit, 
Can I hit play? Come on, shielding app. Please be working. What? Go. Go, Shanlin, go. I don't know what that is. Somehow through this weird fucking design, I hear rich, clear vocals, not just out of the speaker, like if it's left and right, but out of the center. Like I was sitting here on my ball. Whoever doesn't have a ball, let me tell you what these are great for. Two things, four things. But really what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this. And now I'm gonna be on the floor adjusting things. If you're an audiophile, you're gonna have a cabinet with equipment on the floor and you're gonna have to get on your hands and knees, but this is so much better. So, Wong says build up static electricity. So, I was down here doing shit like this, you know, adjusting it, going to the menu, going to the settings, like what do I wanna hear? Night call, Fatboy Slim, I wanna hear some Fatboy Slim. Everything you put on while on the floor right here, and I've obsessively measured them, you know, how far from that wall to the center of this, and how far from that wall to the center of this, how far from the speaker. You hear all the music right here in front of you. You hear it here and here and here, all the way back to where your sitting position is. Because it's using the entire room. It's doing some fucking weird Broadman shit. Broadman made these because they sell pianos. And Broadman was like, we don't have any good speakers that could reproduce pianos perfectly. And they made bigger versions of this. I prefer the small one, the, the little, the bigger ones had two tweeters and it got weird. But like, it, uh, oh, it broke again. I fucking hate the Shanling app. It's the worst thing ever. Fatboy Slim. Now, granted, we are have a, we do have a subwoofer going right now. I will disable it when I'm in the basement, or I'll bring it down and keep using it. Fuck you. Um, but there's like a warmth and richness to this sound that is just it's room filling, and that's what I had with the ohms. The ohms have a problem though. The ohms need to be in a corner, so that was the problem with the ohms. You have to shove them in a, in a corner completely. Back and side need to be near a wall, and the closer you get to the corner, the more bass. So you got to got to fine tune it like this. But then they also had weird like dispersion of the tweeter like the tweeter was shooting up which was great for moving around but it never had like that really clear crystalline highs which is why there's a thousand dollar set of add-on tweeters these take away two problems they do need a wall to the side absolutely 100 percent mr man yes 100 percent. you need a wall to the side you have to be a certain distance from the side but the tweeter is front firing so you get that and that is a tweeter on a $6,000 Austrian speaker. So it is just like perfect. It's not too much. It's not too little. When I went, here's the thing. I was a virgin audiophile in 2013. This channel had just started. I was like, look at the FOE 10K. It's got a knob. Woo, that was me. And yet these speakers spoke to me hard enough that I remembered them. After seeing hundreds of speakers at the New York Audio Show, wait, that's an exaggeration. 61 speakers at the New York Audio Show, and then Rocky Mountain, you saw hundreds of speakers, and it was always these. And when I, when that guy said, I have two for sale, and he said $2,000, I'm like, <gasps> fuck. Because I knew that money just fell out of my fucking pants. It was in my pants, now it's on, on the floor. I was gonna talk about the, the system. It's just the, uh, the Shanling EM7, which is the more expensive one but I actually had a FIO, the FIO unit up here, and it didn't sound as good. So that when I do the FIO review, I'll have to mention that this one that's three times the price is better sounding. But that XLR out to the Stark Rimsons from Orchard Audio, the monoblocks up to it, and then the RSA outs down to the uh, Martin Logan sub, and this is the fucking bed. It's a shame that my bed exists here. I kinda wanna get rid of my bed and make a listening room. Cause this house is very bad for listening rooms. It doesn't really have one, and I just had to make one up in my basement. When I bring these into the basement for the second half of this video, which won't be today, it'll be when I fucking feel like it, I might have a fucking time because I don't have a wall. I've got speakers lined up, but I've got 35 feet of basement past that wall of speakers and that's gonna be a curtain and it's like eight feet of speed. I have no idea how they're gonna sound in the basement. All I know is that right here, perpendicular or parallel to the wall, perpendicular to each other, with this subwoofer just placed in the middle, with the zero phase, let's try to get the timing aligned right. 
Um, I absolutely did not waste two thousand dollars. And I want to say something else before I bring them to a dank and, and nasty basement. These are some of the prettiest pieces of equipment I've ever seen in my life. I think that had a lot to do with me memorizing them because audiophile shit's usually giant and ugly. I oh, audiophile speakers are beautiful. Zeus, what are you talking about? Eh. Like there's a there's a beauty in simplicity and minimalism. The one side to hold it up and then just just a black box. It's a black box. It's got rounded corners. Like that's the only feature of this. It looks like a portal turret. If a portal turret was a $5,000 Austrian speaker, it's a portal turret. And the the fact that there's a lineage there for Broadman. Broadman isn't some speaker maker that says uh, they're a fucking company that is established. In fact, their parent company makes even more expensive pianos. Their pianos end at like $80,000 US. Their parent company, which I can't recall the name of, makes like quarter million dollar pianos. And you know what they did? The parent company just took these speakers, put their name on it too, and were like, yeah, we make speakers too. This speaker was built for a purpose by a company that does musical instruments. And for some reason, that seems to work. That's I'm, I need more companies that were spawned from like cello makers and fucking ragtag time jukeboxes like something that isn't just i am bob and i want to make bob speaker this speaker has something about it that no other audio i'm gonna call it an audiophile speaker once you're above like the they're not even honestly in the grand scheme of things five grand for a show price fifty nine hundred dollars that's not that much but if you showed it to me on paper and said it's a two-way with a five and a quarter and a single silk dome I'd be like, what are you fucking high? But then you see them sitting here. You see them sitting here with that tweeter, with just a little bit of, of, of gold around it and the logo and the stand. And it's just like, uh, I put this in a fucking magazine. These are magazine speakers and I am not worthy to have them in my home. But um, yeah, no, the sound out of them is exactly what I want from every expensive speaker at an audio show. It's doing the shape of it differently. We've got width well beyond where they're spaced because they're sh literally shooting to the side. And yet somehow it wraps around and comes out the bottom and envelops you, the listener, who's sitting obviously on a yoga ball in your bedroom Listening to group unity. This brilliant six piece band perfectly melds together. This should not get me copyright. What a sound. Right there, right there. And over there. This is some audiophile bullshit music, but it's, just, it's lovely. And I believe there's some bias going on because I mean, I fucking bought them and I remember them and I was a little shocked when I got them that it didn't sound good, but now it's like. I love doing that, by the way, that's fun. Childish Gabino's on and this is, this is vibrating like a motherfucker. Oh. Uh... All right, we're going to move these to the basement and I'm going to try to actually hammer them. There will be a sound demo. For those of you who don't know, uh, first of all, thank my supporters. Uh, I try not to use Patreon money for everything, but apparently I'm only going to be paid in Patreon money because everything else sucks right now. So thank you to my Patreon supporters. Um, sound demos for these, and it's going to be a fucking hoot. They might come back up here to do the sound demo. Uh, will be available only to supporters, Patreon and Subscribestar. And I get to use whatever songs I want. I'll probably bring a laptop up here instead of this or plug a laptop into it so I have control. Um, and you also get to download that track losslessly in case you want to listen to it without the, uh, you, well, it won't be really, com it'll be compression from Telegram, which is where I host the videos or someone hosts the videos. I don't do anything of the sort. Um, so yeah, if you want to hear the sound demo for these, which I will do my best, uh, $5 support gets you all the sound demos I've ever done ever. And all the new sound demos from now on will never be on YouTube. So let's move downstairs. What is this song? I don't want that song. 
That's a song. All right, we're done. We're done. Let's go down to the basement. Come with me. That's Tick of the Clock by Chromatics. And holy fuck, am I sweaty. All right. I moved these down here like three or four days, four or five days, a while ago. I don't know. And I just put them down and it was fucking good. Like it was good. And then I started fucking around because that's what Zeus does. He's like, you know what? These are a little low. And I'm hearing like the center is like, it's basically eye level, but I'm a height dominance guy. I like tall speakers. So um, I got out the brass pucks for the feet. These little guys. And I got a piece of this tile. Because I have a bunch of this tile. This used to be my sound demo tile. Now I have, actually I have like five of them. And then I got out, not because you know how hard it is to find matching things to lift speakers? So here's a box from the topping A90D. And over there is a box from the L70. I think L70. Same exact box, same exact tile. Put the things up that high. Raise it up that much. Just like bring the tweeter up there. Something's off. Same exact spot. I have the markings on the floor in case you don't know. I Every 10 inches I mark the floor because we work on not uh, metric. Instead, I'm gonna go with tens, but inches. I'm a fuck. Anyway, by the way, new carpet down here um, to cover some stains that were here and also to add a little bit more sound absorbency. Um, you might notice there's tables set up and I should have like done a time lapse. If I would have fucking killed for a time lapse of me just. Anyway, the reason I'm sweaty is because so I set them up and then I put them up in the things and you know what? They were much easier to move because I could just slide the boxes around and I'm like, mm, let me try the angles. No, no. And then I put the tables, but not open like this. They're taller if you fold them in half and see them vertical to like here because the speaker driver was up higher. And it was like, yeah, oh my God, the difference it made sliding it back and forth along the speaker wall. And I must have tried three different, three or four different this ways. Like I had them way back here and then I had them fully on the rug and then I had them half on the rug and now I have them one quarter on the rug and that's where I like them best. These things are a fuck bitch. Sorry, YouTube, just to monetize me already. Um, I've never in the entire history of Z reviews had a speaker that's just so insistent on you being perfectly placed and like I had to build a room I had to, I had to build a room for those of you who don't know my original plan was not to put curtains up and to have speakers lined in the walls instead I was going to have mobile walls that were going to be on legs that I could just roll in and place wherever I wanted big like sheet rocked but then if I flipped it around they'd be two by four or two by six and the other side would be fabric with insulation like the ceiling is so it could be sound absorbent or sound reflectant and I could build different like modular rooms of different sizes and I was like fuck that curtains on guy wires and it was very good but now I could have really used those walls because these need to be here and they <clears throat> have to be as vertical as possible because if you tilt them then the sound the, the first point reflection which if you don't know when you're listening when you set up a speaker a speaker produces sound and then it hits your wall that's the first point of reflection, and then it reflects there. Just like if your wall was made of like a shiny material and you pointed a laser, that laser is going to bounce and hit you in the eye. And you want that, or you don't want that. No, no, usually you don't want that, which is why you put sound dampening panels right where that is. The beauty of this space, at least for any speaker besides this, is that we've got nothing back there, and then... Take my, my oh, bubble levels linked in the description because holy fuck, also this floor is on level. We've got like another six or seven feet back there, but all these speakers and anime waifus, they act as sound diffusers, which means that sound hits it like here and bounces somewhere else that's not there or here and up. So that counts and it's a write-off and I'm writing them off because they're a sound diffuser. Um, link to some sound diffusers in the description. Maybe there'll be waifus. Maybe they'll be actual sound diffusers, but usually just breaking the sound apart or letting it fucking go, just like go over there sound, 
don't reflect on anything because there's literally no wall here is great that's why my basement sounds so good we've got insulation above very thin plastic so it just absorbs i have a carpet now another carpet and then there's no wall behind me it's just forever and ever but these speakers i picked that wallpaper as soon as i came down here I actually saw the movie. It was fantastic. Reminded me how good this show is. But you see that? If you don't know who Kaguya Sama is, go watch the entire three seasons in a movie. She's complicated, but she's worth it. And these are complicated, but they're worth it. I'm going to keep saying that. I didn't change anything else either because I brought it from the, uh, the bedroom down here and I wanted to make sure I didn't change a single thing. The only thing I changed was instead of playing the playlist that was on the Shanling, um, I'm now running the fiber optic from the Matrix X Spitif 3 into that and feeding it with my normal FUBAR playlist. So it's still using that DAC, still using that volume control, although I am being lazy and just sort of tweaking the actual FUBAR volume. But like I tell you, the difference, like, oh yeah, you're supposed to control volume at the very last stage. Like, this would be fine. If those had a volume control, you'd do it there. You could do it in the voltage. Use, doing it digitally means you're removing bits. I guarantee you the minute amount of damage that does to this track has nothing over how much different four degree, like literally every amount of tilt and yaw. And if the tables are vertical or even there, like I just laid the tables down. And then I did this. You want, the reason I was sweaty is it was move speaker gently. I, I've been touching him. Speed wax linked in the description. Lucas slick mist speed wax because when you need to shine your fucking uh, piano, I actually bought some specific piano shine, and that'll be here soon too. But um, this is stuff I use in my car, and if you were on Twitter or Instagram at all when I was doing it. Uh, holy shit. Like, this is a wax. And, it, like, you, you spray it on and it dries a little bit and it gets all cloudy and then you wipe it off. And then your shit turns into a mirror. <laughs> and let me tell you, I don't have a car painted as nice as these speakers are painted. So we, we did that. We'll give it a second. Anyway, back to sound. I love these speakers. I, I love them. I love them to death. Are they the best speakers? I can't say that because they require such ungodly amounts of effort and placement that I can't recommend them. How could I recommend them? You people, I guarantee you, these are not for sale anymore because they were set up at shows. If I ever did a show and I brought these to the show, like a room and a show, I'd have to get there five days early because I'd be doing... I actually physically considered building like a slide mechanism out of like drawer slides where I could sit here and then I'd have pulleys and I could just pulley the speakers so that they would slide in and out. Could still be done. You know, I don't fucking, uh, 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 uh. Joshua Vallard, that's his name, has the, oh, I built speaker stands that go up and down. Fantastic. Now build them that go left and right, in and out, twist, and then fucking float around the room and put themselves away in the corner, because I was actually considering doing that. Um, and now they're dry enough to give them the the, the buff. Um, yeah, no. I love these speakers. When you get them placed, and I'm talking about like, fully off this carpet was too far back. Meow. Cut it out. Stupid gay cats, gay. Um, I don't want to knock them over either. <sighs> Clarity with the fact that the walls are that the walls are now there adds to the oh my god, look at that shine! Look at that shine! Um, I moved the sub again, I moved the sub the same with it because you can actually chuff these speakers through those weird ports, and I'm actually considering maybe getting a router bit that could fit in that little channel and then just put my little little router in the go with the with the wheel and go and just just flaring the port at the bottom although i don't think it'll work you know the, the problem i think is that the port is m slightly blocked by the metal here yeah it doesn't it doesn't i have to flare it only in <sighs> all right now that i've done my complainings oh look at the cats Come on, hang out with me. Daddy loves you. 
Okay. Placement is everything. And they probably stopped selling these speakers because people heard them at shows. They were set up perfectly by Broadman or resellers. And then people brought them to their houses, which are weird and different and have plants and wives and all sorts of things that fuck with your space. And they played them. I literally hated these. I, first thing I did was oh, I had them up in the stands and I moved them back into the corners, not quite that far, but like further away. Muffled and bass, like bassy, but not the good kind of bassy. There was no tightness to it. It was like a, it was like a womp womp. They sounded like a womp womp womp. And then I'm like, okay, no. So then I just spent the last two hours sitting down, standing up, moving things, and then flopping back down on the same track over and over again. I had a couple tr songs. I had to go through like five or six songs. So I think I must have sat sat down and stood up 45 times in the last two hours maybe less than two hours because i was pretty aggressively getting up and moving things I'm like all right i'm gonna give us half a song and get up and move things but when it's working when you get it and this right now i can call right you got to keep them parallel parallel to each other parallel to the walls the correct distance back, the correct, correct distance apart, then those walls, because the sound is coming off and hitting the first reflection point into you, but it's also hitting that first reflection point, then hitting that wall. So the sound is bouncing in both directions and then to you. So that's gotta be, you can't have it like off center. Wow, I couldn't finish the word center. Violet Evergarden. There was a point where I could hear the speakers, like where they were, like that speaker's playing that sound. And that wasn't happening upstairs in my bedroom. And I needed to keep shuffling things around until that happened again, until the speakers vanished. And uh, putting them up that little tiny bit negated the fact in my mind that this speaker's projecting sound forward with a tweeter, projecting sound sideways with the five, and projecting sound downward with the port. The port is acting almost... Probably 60% of what's coming out of the side is coming out of the bottom as well. And I took it away from the floor. Regardless of there being like carpet down here and everything, it's still using the floor to project not just bass, but mid-range. That's the mid-range driver. When, when, you know, Barry White sings, he ain't coming out of that fucking tweeter. And then I, I had this, by the way, while I was doing all this moving with the sub off. I just turned the volume knob down on the sub all the way. And then when I turned it back up, I, I had to start doing fucking shit with that. And it was, oh my God. <sighs> and I could finally sit here now and tell you that I spent my money wisely. I mean, I bought speakers. So anyone who has this many speakers and then says I spent my money wisely on speakers is a fucking idiot. Give me my card that says I'm, a, I'm an idiot, guaranteed. But now there's just this like... I don't hear sounds coming from there. I hear sounds coming from there, which the speaker isn't there. But I hear the sounds coming from there because it's a blend of everything that's happening and everything that's happening. And honestly, I've never... The only speakers that come close to the weirdness are the ones in my bedroom, which are the own Walsh. All you other guys... I mean, the boo cards have rear-firing drivers as well, but their DSP built-in compensates for a lot of the weird... So you just plug in the thing that's like this or this or this, and then it works. Could room correction fix these? Honestly, I don't think you'd even have a chance. Because it's not like you could... First of all, you don't even have two terminals in the back to separate the tweeter from the side driver. So you couldn't really mess with it physically. You'd have to mess with the frequencies at the cutoff and delay. No, no. These are exactly what I remember them being, fucking magical. What I didn't know is that it was the kind of magic from Full Metal Alchemist where you need to literally kill a fucking whole world full of people to crush it into a st By the way, spoilers for Full Metal Alchemist. Um, yeah, no. I, I what, the, what was this called? What was it stone? The whatever stone. It was not good news bears. It was very bad news bears. But you know what? End of the day, what's a couple of ish fallen rebels, you know? if your music sounds this good. <sighs> Code gay ass. What is it? In permanence we feel. And that's a fucking song title. 
If you want to hear a sound demo of these, please, patrons and subscribe star subscribers, I will do my best. It's going to be a hard one. That's why I didn't leave the mics here. I was going to just do it right away. And I'm like, no, 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 no. We'll wait. So you probably won't get that for at least another few weeks because I'm not setting it back up again. Although I'm not taking these down. Like that's a piano, first of all. That's that's what these were fucking literally built for. Broadman was like, not, I, how do you do an Austrian accent? Arnold Schwarzenegger is Austrian. Look here. There are no speakers that can do piano properly. I'm assuming they all sound exactly like Arnold Schwarzenegger. We will build them. They will be called the Broadman FS. And then the bigger ones. Uh, uh, uh. If I was going to DIY speakers, and I did DIY some speakers back in the day with my father, which is real weird. Because my father and I took apart, he had a 77 Buicle Saber. I know, luxury. It was green. Ugly green. And then my grandfather painted the back mint green, which wasn't a matching green, with a roller because the paint was coming off. And we came back from vacation. We took his Buick Saber, And he said, I painted the trunk. I love my grandfather to death. Um, but that was like, my father was like, ah. Um, anyway, we took the back. My father did audio. My father's this is probably the reason I'm here. I'm sure if I have kids, they'll be into audio too, or they'll never listen to a single thing. That's how fatherhood works. Either they follow you or they hate you. Um, but we took the back panel out of the Saber. My father had built something with six inch drivers and some dome tweeters, dome mid ranges. He took that out. We got rid of the car. So we had these speaker drivers hanging around and some crossovers. So I don't know why my father put us to task, but he's like, let's build speaker boxes, son. And I'm like, yeah, dad, let's do it. Um, only the thing is we only had the two sets and we didn't want to agree on a design property. So we each built our own having like they're just completely different designs but using the same three-way speaker system with a crossover and my father built a bazooka tube with this with a driver down and the 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 tweeter f and mid-range forward and that was his i forget how he did the bottom and mine i went fucking nuts mine was a, a box on top and then the box stopped at some point and then there was a 45 like that, but like a 45 and the, the driver was in there and it was ported out the back. I had no idea. I didn't look. This is before anyone was looking shit up on the internet to build things. I just built a speaker that looked cool as fuck. And you know what? I never got to hear him because you got to hear a speaker in pairs. I got to put two different speakers up with the same drivers. And it was like, oh, this is interesting. I, you know what? Where is that speaker? It's probably still at my grandparents' house. I don't remember where. That would be interesting to bring that back and then match it with another one. Like, change the drivers out so they match. But this sort of design is cool as fuck. But then all this. When I heard these at that show, I knew that this was the benchmark. And it was for years. For years. Up until probably... Uh, well, I did ohms a couple years later, then got the ohms, and I there wasn't really like the same category in my mind. In my mind, these are just speakers. They're not doing this room expansion thing. But um, after that, probably the, the ones that I want the most, besides the MoFi's, those are new. Those will those will be here at some point. Was there's a speaker called uh, fuck? There's a ZMF makes a headphone. The Otors. Gail Sanders did a speaker. I forget the fucking name. I love it. It's $25,000. Is it the atrium? Oh, my God. I've, I've literally... Whatever. I'll link it in the description. It's $25,000. It's self-powered. You have to put four XLRs into it. And there's a giant box that does timing that sends data to Europe. And then it times the room. And that speaker sounds the best. It's $25,000. Um... Aeolus. Atrium. No. No. My brain, my mind trembles. Anyway, yeah, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna link to eBay for the search results to Broadman. And you're not gonna find shit. You're never gonna find these speakers, because literally I was looking and I couldn't find the speakers. It took magic. If you're ever in Austria visiting the Broadman piano uh Mushoku Tensei. Um, for visiting the Austrian uh, piano factory, I'm sure they'll have a few lying around. Just lying around. 
And I didn't even see the ones in this black. I was I was hoping they'd be the wood that I saw them in because it was like a wood finish. Fuck that. Piano black. First time in history I'm into the black blackest speaker. But yeah, no. Um, the tweeter is so nice. It's not a it's not a harsh tweeter. In fact, most of the tweeters here, except for what's on the Swan, soft dome, soft dome, horn, horn, soft dome, horn, soft dome, soft dome. No, that's a no. It, it, this speaker is all about that tweeter. And then just compensating for its failures of, it, it's it sounds fucking amazing. And then, and then, this is string quartet doing Nirvana, heart shaped box. I, I'd love to play you all this, and I can. If you follow me on Patreon or subscribe star, you get into the sound demo oasis where I, I want to make this like a two hour review because I want. I've spent too much time and money on these, and I want to get my money's worth, which is when I bore you to death with stories about my father's 77 Buick LeSabre in ugly fucking green. It overheated going to New Jersey. That's how fucked it was. <laughs> we couldn't even make it on like a 90 degree day down to, the, down to Wildwood, New Jersey from New York. That's like a two and a half hour drive. God, my childhood. I'm glad I ended up here. Thank you all for supporting me. Oh God, it's so deep. Once you put them right, it just, it just disappears. It's just, it's just there and then here and then, oh, you basically have to wear these. Look how close I am. I'm like, I could touch that. That's too close usually, but um, fuck it. Works perfectly. Kaguya-sama is in the wallpaper hoard. L links to some things, I guess the speed wax and the, the, the I don't know else. See else you watch this video. I have to watch these, so I, I linked it. If you're ever in, in town, stop by and we'll uh, we'll have a listen. Although I have to mark the floor with fucking spray paint so I know exactly where to put them and then to level them. I do love the leveling feet where you just twist it and you, I have to get the bubble level, but then it'd be better if it was only three because three is much easier to level with tripod, but um, four is fine too. And you can't, you literally cannot beat that high. Oh, God. There's even dust on it, and I have to clean the dust off. So, yeah. Um, thank you, Broadman, for being an Austrian piano company. Thank you to my patrons and subscribe star subscribers. See reviews early. Participate in yard sales, which these will not be in unless life's gone real bad. Which, we got a new YouTube uh, commander-in-chief. Apparently, he's into NFTs and crypto and voted to get rid of the dislike button. So <laughs> I'll see you on Utreon, everybody. Um, see your reviews early, participate in yard sales. First to 10th of every month, I sell shit that I'm not gonna use. This might eventually end up in there, although it sounds so good. Um, Sound Demo Oasis, you guys know about that, right? Because I wanna play the music. I'm just sitting here, this is the best thing ever. Um, yeah, sound demos. And then for $10 a month, if you want to ask me questions directly or ask for pictures of my cat or give advice on what's going out or know everything that's happening behind the scenes here on Z Reviews, now the height's perfect. Maybe these are floor sit. These are pasta speakers. She's a floor sitter. The problem was I wasn't sitting completely on the floor. Now they're perfect, always. Anyway, $10 a month. Ask me any questions you like and then also ask everybody else questions you like, show off your gear in the private chat, and you get into a lifetime swap meet channel where you can buy, sell, and trade gear when you've made terrible, terrible financial decisions and have to uh, swap them out for cash or trade for gear because you're a fetishist and you just love it. Yeah, the gray wallpaper, because worth it, just fucking worth it. Just sometimes you just want the Fujiwara of speakers though, and that's not. <laughs> these. <laughs>